much for being here. I have to toot my own horn sometimes. <laughs> and this video is all about the orchids that have gained momentum this season where I feel like, yes, I am winning. They are coming around. They're coming onto their own. There are others, but this selection particularly has caught my attention and I am well surprised for many, many different reasons. So let's get into it. Thank you for your time. I hope that your orchids have shown you this season that they are capable of more than what you expected and have surprised you just as much as these candidates have in my collection. So right, let's start off with Alex Neifert's Pauli. Look at that thing. I mean, right. I've never been disappointed about this orchid. So what is impressing me this season is that, look, this was the first growth that matured this season. My biggest issue was always, always thrips with this orchid. And I finally figured out Thank you very much to Adrian, Orchid Planet. The garlic alcohol concoction that has saved my sanity when it came to certain pests that I couldn't identify. And in this case, it was thrips. And you can see last year's growth was badly affected. And then, yay, enter garlic into my insecticide repellent concoction. And that is all history. So we got ourselves some clean growth this season. You see the damage from last year? Uh-huh. This was the first growth that matured this season. And it's clean. It's still clean. And I'm so happy about it because, yes, this orchid will bloom because it is a robust and vigorous orchid. But, you know, as best as we can, we would like to grow our orchids with clean leaves. The next thing that has impressed me about this orchid, where I'm thinking, yes, it's gaining momentum. I have a second lead coming down here. This little growth here. Yeah, this is the back of the orchid. And this little one started the season. Very, very pleased. The biggest thing that has caught my eye, and as you can see quite clearly, probably, da da da, duh. <laughs> what is it doing? What is this orchid doing? Hey, not complaining at all. But look at this growth. After maturing this growth, which I thought was pretty impressive with regards to the size jump, that's pretty good going. And look at what's come after that. And it's clean. And you know what? I haven't addressed this orchid one time since this growth has started to grow with garlic alcohol. I'm not saying that I'm over the thrips issue. They can come back at any, any time. But just to see how far can I push it with the timing between treatments, not once since it started growing. And look at this monster. This is insanity, a beautiful insanity, if I may say so myself. Isn't that amazing? We have another size jump from the previous growth to what this one's gonna be like. I can't believe it. I see it, I'm in awe, I'm thrilled. So this orchid, Dendrobium nafritz alex poli, has in my books gained some serious momentum. Now, I'm quite happy if it continues along these lines, but if this is the maximum size growth I will ever get out of it, well, job done. Amazing, just, just amazing. So, <laughs> I can't tell you. Well, maybe you can hear it. So please. The next one that I am absolutely happy about is my Dendrobium munificum, Inobulbum munificum. So this orchid I saw first on Alberto's videos when it was in bloom and I thought I've got to have that orchid. Beautiful sprays of blooms that are pendant and then they have bronze markings with brown lines. It's just gorgeous. So I was impressed. Well, you know, look at these pseudovals. <laughs> They're all fuzzy and cool. But <clears throat> when I got it, I straight away put it into my self-watering and lecker. And this is still the pot from the moment that it arrived. Let me check in 2018. Eek, I'm pushing it. I'm pushing it with this orchid as to how long I want an orchid to be in a pot without checking the roots. But it needed time to adjust 
to me, my climate and where it is. You can see that self-watering does wonders for weeds as well. Look at that. Never underestimate self-watering with regards to how you want to grow your plants. <laughs> but in the years that it's been with me, it's grown some growths, a single leaf, and it grew a double leaf, and it grew another really small growth in the back. And I was like, oh gosh, maybe the setup isn't working for it, but I didn't want to change the setup either. So I just stuck it out and hung on and look at what's happening now. Ta-da! Look at the size of this growth now. Oh my goodness. It's not growing roots yet, but when it starts to grow roots, trust me, we are going in, we're cleaning up because I don't want another 12 months of this orchid in this setup. But look, it's gonna be a stonker of a growth. It's gonna be the biggest one that I have grown in my care. This is what it came with. This is the potential it is showing me. They can get bigger than that even. But finally, it actually is pushing out a growth where I'm like going, okay, we're friends, we're friends. Happy days, thank you so much. I love this orchid. It has never bloomed for me, clearly. It may be another two years before it does, but oh, happy days. This is giving me hope. And the other one, yep, nothing super fancy like its predecessor there. But this is my Dendrobium nobili. It's a no ID. It was bought off the, so to speak, rescue table. To check and see how nobilis behave, regardless of when you buy them, how long do they take to acclimate? Well, my nobili belongs into this category because, excuse the one chewed leaf up here, but because look at the cane here and back here, we are now getting to the canes the size of when I bought her. So this one is gaining momentum after three years of acclimating to where it is with me based on how far it was pushed in the nursery with all the perfect and ideal conditions, probably blooming out of season. I wouldn't know because I didn't buy it in bloom. But yeah, look at these canes. We're in business. My first year, this one was just chucking out keikis all the time. All it wanted was to grow keikis. Typical sign of stress when a dendrobium chucks out keikis. It doesn't mean that your culture is wrong. It's just like it doesn't know where it's going. Left, right, is it supposed to grow? What season is it in? It doesn't have the hormones that it used to have. Keikis are a sign of stress. More often than not, especially with these complex hybrids. But we got over that. We harvested the keikis. We planted the keikis as well into the pot straight away. Just took them off and trying to bulk up whatever it is, a display that it's going to be. So a lot of these little guys down here are the remnants of the keikis. But even the keikis now are growing canes to half the size, which is absolutely fine. But this year in 2021, I had no keikis. I had a beautiful bloom show and I had growths growing from the previous canes at the base the way they should and they're coming onto their own. They're thick, they're chunky and my mealy bug issues are also a thing of the past because of garlic alcohol. Woohoo! In the beginning I had to be very very careful, be very very watchful because I've lost new growths last year because mealy bugs were faster than I was. But since the garlic alcohol, <laughs> look at this. It's going to be a good one come spring 2022. So that's why this one has caught my eye and belongs in this category. Next one. I know it might not appear to be a very, very great candidate for gaining momentum as far as orchids are concerned, but trust me, it is. So you may wonder why a Demophorcus loei would fall under the category of gaining momentum. Well, <laughs> There's not really much momentum when it comes to, as per definition, to a Demophorcus loei because they are so slow. I will never ever see this one bloom. It's just a nice thing to have in the collection. Maybe future generations will see this bloom and I hope that whoever gets this orchid will say, well, Ninja Orchids started it as a seedling. So yeah, Demophorcus loei doesn't really fit into the category of an orchid with momentum, but in my case, it has caught my eye because this leaf is longer 
than what it would have done a year ago. That to me is momentum. Many years I've used to get five centimeters out of the leaf. I believe that this is more than five centimeters, but let's have a look before I start guessing what the real increase has been so far. Let's put it here at the base of the apex. If I am seeing this correctly from my angle, it is a stonking seven and a half centimeters, maybe 7.7. <laughs> but you see what I'm getting at? Momentum. If I can say five centimeters from previous years of what I experienced, then another two and a half centimeters more within one season, that to me is an orchid gaining momentum. And she hasn't been repotted either. Again, we have a classic example of how well other plants grow in self-watering. But if that isn't gaining momentum on a Demophorcus lowii, I don't know what is. And that is why she has captured my attention this year. Never been repotted, as you can see. My dirty lecker shows clearly how the old mineral deposits have wicked up. But she doesn't care. I'm glad she doesn't care. I have no intention of going in and repotting this orchid anytime soon. Yep, momentum, Demophorcus lowii. Who'd have thunk? <laughs> Only with ninja orchids. Right, and then the next one, the next ones, but the first one that really caught my attention this year is Ancelia africana. Look at this thing. It took me almost a year of this orchid when I only got sticks, like uh, canes, <laughs> but they looked like sticks in the mail. I only got these like remnant of sticks and uh, I thought, yeah, well, um, that's not what I was hoping to get to cultivate an Ancelia africana. But look, after two years of her then growing a few more growths and establishing a root system, yes, because this orchid is now quite heavy, she is completely pot bound. <laughs> Look at that. I have never repotted her from the moment that she has arrived because I was very afraid of even losing the little pathetic sticks that I got. But look at her. Look at her now. This year has been the year of this orchid. I'm still getting some growth. She might be a pygmy variety. I do not know. Maybe we have ourselves a miniature Ancelia africana here, because her growth, to my understanding, should be much, much bigger. But considering that I can now pump a lot of fertilizer, and you see how much water is in there, because she drinks this reservoir in a day. For the length of these canes, she is a thirsty, thirsty orchid. But all these growths are new, and they're the second flush of the year. The first flush has already matured. She is really, really going to town in her pot. That is why, yes, my first ever Ancelia Africana, momentum. Needless to say, the newcomers, my goodness, the reverse being the newcomers of Afri orchids that I received this year in July. This is Buffalo crossed with Leo. This is Joe crossed with Puff Adder. <laughs> and this is Kenya Mud crossed with Self. Now, these guys, even though they've only just arrived, are just taking off. It's like they said, okay, I'm home, I'm in my boma, and I shall perform. And are they performing? They really, really are. It may not look like it when you consider this one here, but they are pot bound in a short period of time. <laughs> and I'm loving it. It's just incredible. I don't have to lift that one up. I might break <laughs> the growth because look at the size of it. But yeah, the one growth that I was expecting is doing very, very well. And then I have a second growth coming right here. Aerial roots are coming out. This is their way of saying they're happy. Now they're searching out the environment and hoping for debris to fall into that pot as part of their fertilizing source. And here is another one, same thing. I had one eye right here, uh, decided to give me another eye pot bound, happy days. Still waiting for some aerial roots there. And Joe with puff adder is just like, um, yeah, taking the lead, let's just say. Absolutely incredible. So 
happy with how these have adapted super, super well. Now, you can see that I'm having some little, ahem, you know, insects thinking that this is a buffet. It is not. So I have treated them with garlic alcohol, and I'm hoping that whatever has been around thinking it's okay to take a piece out of my orchids will get the hint and stay away from here on in. But yeah, those are the Anthelias. And the reason that these guys are so green and this one is so yellow is the different light levels because they live in my deep south, a little bit more shaded because I wanted to get them used to the environment. Next year, they can go onto the top shelf of my east facing side together with their other Ancelia Africana, which is not named by the way. With the exception of the Nafets Alex Poli, all these are living on the east side in different levels of shelves. The Inobulbum Municicum and the Loei are on the lowest shelf where they get a lot of bright light, a lot of heat resonating from the terracotta right underneath them, but they're never in direct sun. My Dendrobium nobili was on the left side of the shelf and it got direct sun when I pulled the curtain back just as the sun was creeping around the corner of the building. So it had a lot of sun during the summer and a lot of light. My Nefert's Alex Poli here lives in my blooming alley all year round where it has had plenty of bright light, but almost in perma shade. Now that the angle of the sun is dropping, I'm quite cautious as to how I position her because I don't want those lush leaves to burn. Finally, <laughs> finally, after all this time fighting a pest I didn't know I had, um, this makes me very happy. And to get a sunburn on that would just be very, very annoying. But I have another little row of orchids that I want to show you that I'm very, very pleased about. Just to wrap this video up, the Tolumnia debacle of 2020, I think we've overcome it. So I'm just going to show you all my Tolumnias as they are today. Looking healthy, looking lush, and in spike. Looking healthy, looking lush. Some are a little bit more straggly, but look at those roots. Yeah, we've got the roots going. And we've got a spike going. Ta-da! This one here is looking healthy, looking lush, and is strong enough from two growths of the season to bloom. This is golden fire. This is one that I can identify. And the spikes are branching, which is a first. Two spikes on a single orchid and branching. They've been branching now for the past two, three months. Here I have another one that looked a little bit miserable because of my overkill on the fertilizer for the first two years I had them. But look at the growth now, looking lush, looking shiny. Everything is the way it's supposed to be. And another one is on the way. Here we have one that looks a little bit like it could be on the verge of not making it, but wrong. There we go. Two new growths of the season. Maybe it'll spike, maybe it won't. But look at the growth, look at the size. I've had some scale issues. They were promptly dealt with. Here's one that had some cold damage from the winter of 2020 to 2021, but it has recovered. I've got nice new growths. I've got proper roots going all around, looking wonderful. If you're wondering about all the white on my lava rock, that is either fading, maybe it's remnants of mineral deposits still, but it is not affecting the health of the orchids anymore. You can see, despite maybe white spotting, I've got green root tips. Happy days! And look at these growths. Now, to my annoyance, some are growing straight through the wire basket instead of upright, but whoa, now I'm just being picky. Here's another one. Well, this one has bloomed for us. Here's another one that has bloomed for us. Look at this thing. Ta-da! got all those roots in there and they're all happy and the growths are showing that they are happy tolumnias now. Here we have what I believe is a pink beige. Also roots in spike, massive growths and can you believe it? I hardly fertilized them this year. Maybe on the occasion a hundred parts per million. Maybe I was more focusing on getting healthy roots into the pot 
that won't die on me or burn on me because of hot winds and over fertilizing. And <laughs> the growths are huge. Here's another pink brisht. I'm pretty sure because they look so similar. I've got one spike per growth and I'm seeing a scale there. I'm sure that it is dead. But after filming, I will make doubly sure. But look at this one in its basket. Isn't that amazing? for hardly any fertilizer went into this basket at all. Just caring for the roots. And this is what I get. I'm gonna have two beautiful spikes of the two new growths of the season. Yeah. And this one was a sad little guy when we started in 2021. I wasn't sure it's gonna make it, but look, it's gonna make it. That little growth back there looks a little bit pathetic but it's got all the roots in there and they are happy roots and that is all i asked for oh my goodness i'm so happy at least one out of the distressed tolumnias that i had have made it and boy have i learned my lesson let me show you the newcomer back here i haven't potted that one up yet i'm leaving it i want it to be healthy happy and fan out and you can see how beautifully beautifully lush green it is now. I wouldn't consider this now as an orchid that is in momentum, but seeing as it is a tolumnia, I wanted to show you that it is in spike. And I am really, really taking care of these roots <laughs> to the point that it's that time of day that we can empty out the tub and let this one just dry out overnight. But yeah, look, so momentum, that's not my doing. That is because of the fantastic nursery and the way that it was cared for and loved prior to it arriving in my collection. Momentum of my doing, getting it right, understanding which pest and getting the concoction of garlic alcohol onto my leaves. That's these guys. That's these guys. And this makes me super happy, all my little tolumnias. So I really, really hope that you took some inspiration out of this video because we can sometimes question, what are we doing? Why am I doing this? Why am I getting it wrong? And then suddenly orchids will start to gain momentum and surprise us. And then it's ta-da, they're all doing well. At least these guys. If there is a part two to this, then brace yourself because that might fall under a different category, but wow. Yeah, I didn't want to make this video too long because I can babble on when I'm enthusiastic and happy. <laughs> so I want to say thank you so very, very much for your time, for watching. If you have any questions with regards to what you see here, let me know in the comments below. Right now, have yourselves a wonderful day and please stay safe and take care. Bye.